in this microscope slide, what you're seeing are um, actually a couple of things. So these cells right here that look like little triangles, they're called pyramidal cells or pyramidal cells because they look like little pyramids. They're found in the cerebral cortex. And then over here, this is the cerebellum. And right on this border between the gray and white matter, you're going to have these little cells that kind of look like they have a little tail. Th these are called Purkinje cells. So Purkinje cells in the cerebellum, pyramidal cells in the cerebral cortex. Here's a model of the brain where you can see all the features of the brain. So watch the brain video that I posted and uh, you can actually practice identifying lots of the different parts in this model. This is a really good model. Another reason I like this model is because it actually shows kind of how the uh, cerebrospinal fluid would flow through. So remember when the cerebrospinal fluid is flowing through the subarachnoid space, it gets back into the blood via these little arachnoid villi. And so this would be a dural venous sinus. Another good model of the brain. So you can practice identifying the different parts of the brain on this model. And you'll probably see something like this on your uh, lab exam. Here's a model of the ventricles. So you get two lateral ventricles, third, fourth, and the connections between the two, interventricular foramen, cerebral, or mesencephalic aqueduct. This is another good model that is a good lab test uh, model to identify the ventricles. The pink stuff that you're seeing here, that's the choroid plexus making the cerebrospinal fluid. This is a model of the limbic system. And as far as the limbic system goes, we discussed two major parts of it. So you have the amygdala, which is right here, responsible for fear. And then we have the hippocampus, which is right here. And that is associated with memory. So moving on to the spinal cord, here's a microscope slide of the gray and white matter of the spinal cord. You can see the uh, different horns that we talked about and funiculi posterior back here, anterior up here. You got your gray commissure here with the central canal. Here's a good model of the spinal cord. So this is a good lab test model. So you got your roots, posterior root ganglion, spinal nerve. You got your ramus communicans that you can see right here coming off. And then there should be a posterior ramus branching off right here going back. It's not on this model. And all of this would be the anterior ramus. Again, the gray matter, you got your horns, white matter, funiculi that you've seen before. This is a good model of the spinal cord. It shows a few things that we've talked about, the enlargements, the cauda equina, phylum terminale is this little strip. And then you also have the conus medullaris where it comes to a tapering point right here. And sympathetic chain ganglia, we'll talk about with the autonomic nervous system, but on each side of the spinal cord, you have these ganglia. And then these little triangles that you can barely see on the side of the spinal cord, those are the denticulate ligaments that basically hold the pia mater to the other layers. So denticulate ligaments, it's not labeled, but they're little triangular structures right along the side of the spinal cord. All right, good model of uh, spinal cord that shows the vertebra. So again, you got your regions of the spinal cord, you got your, your uh, roots posterior root ganglion. This is a good model that shows the spaces. So if you look at your meninges, you get your dura mater here, arachnoid here, pia mater here. So this is your subarachnoid space. This is your epidural space.